Hello, welcome. My name is San. This is a reading today for Aquarius. There are no dates on my readings. I trust that when they find you, if they resonate, then they're yours at that time. Aquarius, I'm doing your reading with my um, giant stack of blended decks. So you'll see a mix of several decks in your spread today. So we've got ducks in a row on the split. And forever young at the bottom of the deck. Okay, so this is fascinating. I feel like what we're talking about here is the play of two personalities uh, against each other, alongside each other. You could be either of this equation, Aquarius. How I'm seeing it is the ducks in a row um, character is much more serious, at least in this matter, in this situation, is wanting things to be either like clearly delineated, everything, like all the cards on the table, let's completely understand each other here. And the other with Forever Young is actually kind of like delightfully complicated is how I'm looking at them. They're obviously very playful and youthful, but at the same time, they've got this complexity to them that is not easy to penetrate. So on the surface, they could be, you know, really kind of comical and lighthearted, but you can see that there's an, there's, is it intensity is, I don't know if intensity is the right word. There's, there's depth there. That perhaps, you know, the ducks in a row character is saying like, I know that you've got more going on than you're sharing, or I know that there's more that you could be offering. It's like this one is trying to stay on the surface. Okay, so let's pull you an overall energy from the uh, musical alchemy of astrology deck. Okay, overall energy for Aquarius. Okay, so underneath these two cards is the Seven of Water and the Seven of Air. And that's kind of telling me this story about the reason why you may be um, spending time trying to sort this out is because there seems like there's potential there. Like there's, there's under the surface, there's a, there's a sense of real potential. And it has it's something to do with the complexity of this character that peeking through. So I feel like this is the other, right? You're the ducks in a row. It's like you're wanting something to happen. You're wanting some sort of progress or some sort of um, maybe just uh, really straightforwardness, right? Like let's get to the bottom of this. Let's have a, a negotiation, whatever it is. Let's sort this out. And perhaps they're being a little bit evasive. Okay, overall energy for Aquarius. But you've got this playful aspect too, right? Like see the duck on the head there? That's making me think that you are willing and able to meet them in their playfulness. In fact, perhaps that's how the connection began was through a playful interaction. Oh, but it's like now you're okay like okay let's get more serious here okay overall energy distill extrude i mean ex, extrude is that a word i want to say exclude exclude impurities psychological immune system that's fascinating Okay, so it's talking about distillation. And so this could be what we're getting to here with this one. In fact, it feels like it belongs to them. It's almost as if this card here is this image kind of um, abstracted. You see what I mean? So it's almost like wanting to pull the essence out of this character or this energy in order to be able to study it. Maybe that's your approach here is more of an analytical approach. Which is really interesting because it's kind of like when I was, um, sorry, let me finish this thought. The distill idea is the fact that it's like there's something really refined or I'm hearing the word terrific for some reason. Something really terrific kind of under the surface for this one and you know it's there and you're wanting them to 
offer it up more freely, something like that. So you're wanting to distill it in order, meaning like wanting to get to the essence of them, wanting to get past the, past the distractions that they may be throwing. Okay, so the, their thing is that maybe that they are kind of playfully um, defensive. See what I mean? Okay, which is interesting because we do have the Five of Fire, the first card on the table here, which could be talking about defensiveness. It's interesting because when the cards first came out, Page of Fire, Queen of Air, I was actually thinking that you were more this... Um, this page of fire energy here, right? But actually, obviously, it maybe is, makes more sense that you're this queen of air because I was thinking that you were the one who is wanting to kind of coax this one out of their shell, for example, or get them to loosen up in some way. But now with these beginning cards, it feels almost like that's flipped, but maybe it could go either way, right? So however this applies to you, one is a more playful kind of adventurous, spontaneous, wanting to take things in a radical new direction or just wanting to be really free flowing. And the other is less likely to lean in that direction. See what I mean? So the five of fire here is talking about that that is creating a, a complicated dynamic between the, these two characters. This five of fire is kind of like, well, th this is the fascinating thing. It's like, there seems to be a lot of attraction here with the flirty heart maybe sexual attraction, but maybe just talking about like energetically, spiritually, um, uh, intellectually, intellectual attraction, perhaps. There's something about the interplay of these two characters, whichever one you are, that is bringing out both of these energies. One of them is kind of like a frustration or a defensiveness. And the other one is like extreme uh, magnetism. Do you see what I mean? Interesting, this card actually talks to me a lot about confidence as well. It doesn't necessarily have to talk about being flirtatious. The card says, have fun engaging your alluring nature. And this is the reason why I say confident, because it feels like there's something about kind of interacting in this dynamic that is, uh, well, encouraging you to be more bold, actually, which might be for some reason challenging. It could be the context, like the the context in which you are dealing with this one, maybe adding to the complexity here of the dynamic, but it's like there, the dynamic is actually encouraging you to be more confident, maybe flirtatious, because you've got the wallflower and the empress right below these two characters here, right? Like these are up here. And right below that is Wallflower and Empress, which was really talking to me about that, about this kind of stepping out of your shell, which is fascinating because that's also kind of what's going on here with this card is that um, it feels like, okay, this is the interesting thing. In a way, you're both being encouraged to step forward because it feels like there's something about the way you interact with each other that is really stirring you up, maybe getting you frustrated um, because you can see beyond the surface and you it's like because you want access to that because that's the intriguing thing. It's like, yeah, this was, you know, it was playful and fun and flirtatious perhaps at first, but let's get to the interesting under the surface stuff. I know there's a lot of profoundness here to discover. <clears throat> and it's like, this one just wants to stay on the surface. So in that way, you're kind of coaxing them to bring the depths of them forward. But in another way, it looks like they're kind of pulling something forth out of you, which maybe with this Knight of Fire coming up next, kind of combined with this Five of Fire, it's like it's pulling this fiery nature out of you, making you more, maybe more, maybe more spontaneous, right? It's like maybe you are, because they're, defensive or guarded or um what's a uh like feigning ignorance it's kind of got you wanting to do something radical in a sense right that's what that's why i want to call you this page of fire here because you you want to kind of um get through to them in a way that will bring forward what it is that you know is under the surface. Does that make sense? 
There's something to hear about the intellectual play between you. I want to say because of this queen of air, this is the thing. It's like the, the way that you met or the kind of interaction that you have, maybe it's incredibly clever or, you know, it's like it, it really sparks your imagination through your intellect. Okay. Is what it seems like to me. So, but because of that, it's got you being kind of like more imaginative than ever, partly because this one is being elusive. And so it's kind of drawing out your daydreamy aspects. You see what I mean? It's got you wondering about them, imagining possibilities, for example, or actually it looks like you may be kind of like really certain with the 10 of 10 of earth and the ace of fire, you have this certainty, you kind of have this knowing about the potential here. It's like that there's a lot of, it's like there's a strong foundation individually that combined maybe is really creating this potential spark, right? It's like we have, we have a lot that, like I was saying at the beginning, there's a lot of potential here. I see a lot of potential here. Maybe this one doesn't because they haven't necessarily looked as far into this or daydreamed as far into this as you have but with the the forgiving heart here interesting why can't i pick up this card interesting play on this imagery here right it's kind of like this struggle actually with the night of fire in between so it looks to me like you're this night of fire or you're the one that's being really kind of riled up by this it's like an energetic, an energetic kind of, it's not, struggle's not the right word, but it's definitely, it's interesting. It's, it's like a playfulness that it tips into intensity, which is exactly what you are trying to draw out, right? Or it's drawing that out of you. It's drawing that out of you is this intensity. Interestingly, this night of fire also talks to me about learning something. There does seem to be a lot of potential for uh, mutual sharing in a sense, where it's like you have a lot to offer each other. It's almost like you are both, for example, both highly regarded professionals in completely separate fields, for example, right? You have this kind of playful exchange with them, but you're seeing a deeper potential, right? And the playful exchange, it's kind of like, there's a lot more going on there than the other wants to admit is what it feels like. It's like, this is all really unspoken. It's like this energetic kind of wrestling in a sense. The interesting thing is it looks like, especially because this Knight of Fire and because of the Wallflower and the Empress here, it looks like this, maybe because like I was saying that this is um, unspoken, that there's some sort of an unspoken interaction between the two of you, that it's, it's like there's a, a growing desire on your part to kind of like say it it's like you want to just say like let's just get this out in the open let's say the things it's like let's talk about this let's talk about this struggle or this dance or whatever this is let's just acknowledge it let's acknowledge it and talk about it because there's potential there right that's what this is talking about there's a lot of potential there there's a lot to it's like there's so much to learn from this dynamic that could kind of um Feed both of your lives or both of your careers or both of your purposes profoundly if it were to be utilized to its fullest potential. Because as long as it's this unspoken kind of game in a sense, game isn't quite the right word, but it's kind of like maybe still getting acquainted so you don't know them well enough to speak your heart perhaps but you're ready to kind of spill the beans. You want to step forward. You want to stop being this wallflower and be really bold, right? To step forward and just 
make a declaration or a statement. Put your cards on the table about the fact that the Ten of Earth and the Ace of Fire, it seems to be that's what your message is, is that you see a lot of potential here and or this Ten of Earth could be talking about what it is that that you see in them. It's like there's this, they have a, they have a big life or they have a, a lot of stability or they have a very successful career or something like that. Like this could, this could be talking about them and their life. This is how you're viewing them as wealthy in some regard, well-established in some regard, abundant. And that really sparks you because of particularly, it's like there's something unique about them. There's something really unique about them because this 10 of earth seems very kind of conventional almost, right? But they're not conventional at all. That's the thing. It's almost like maybe they've reached success or abundance or, you know, a fulfilling career in a really unconventional way. It has a very unconventional presentation about it, for example. And that's really intriguing to you. And there could actually even be something about that that's not obvious, right? That they kind of act as if they're not as successful as they are, which is so fascinating because there's been this idea through the readings for a while now about almost this like hidden abundance as if their life is better than they're letting on. They're almost like they're pretending that they're a partier or that they don't have any stability. Do you, you see what I mean? It's like they're acting like they're um, irresponsible, for example, but it, they're not actually at all. And you can see that because it's like, because there's evidence of it. Maybe that's what this wallflower is talking about too, right? It's talking about the fact that it's like, this could be them here, this wallflower energy. The fact that they're keeping it quiet but the fact that they are actually the empress or the emperor energy, see what I mean? That they've actually created something really significant, something really significant that kind of lights you up, right? And makes you maybe want to participate in it. And like I was saying, almost this idea of maybe like you being at the top of your field as well, for example. And so you see how you both have a lot to offer. You both have a lot to bring to the table. And it's like, let's get past this, this aspect and get to the depths of this. With the Four of Water coming up next, though, and the Rebellious Heart coming out right under this Knight of Fire, there's something ex exceptionally beneficial, I think, to this dynamic for you. Because it's kind of, it's awakening this fire within you, this passion within you, which isn't just talking about the fact that there's, you can feel that there's some sort of profound potential here and the fact that it seems like it could interweave somehow with your, and that could be what these cards are talking about, this interwoven potential, interwoven purpose perhaps, even though you could do like radically different things generally day to day life or in your career, you can see the profound um, potential to combine them, especially it feels like when you consider what your purpose is and what their purpose appears to be. Though you might not be certain of that yet because it seems like you're still getting to know them, right? What you suspect that their purpose is. Okay, so not only is it is it sparking that kind of passion within you and desire to act or, or desire to create or move forward, it's also sparking this rebellious spirit within you, which I'm loving so much. The Four of Cups combined with this rebellious heart is talking about that it's it's bringing out this different nature within you, right? Because this is the fascinating thing with the ducks in a row and the queen of air. It's like, it's making you be more radical and outside the box. Not that you're not generally, you know, very open-minded or very um, free-flowing or spontaneous, but I feel like, I feel really strongly like this has something to do with, at least in the beginning, some sort of like professional reputation or your reputation just in the world, how you present it, right? Because there's there does seem to be for you, that's the fascinating thing. It's like you may be slightly irritated by them and their way that they're presenting in the world. 
but what's in wanting to pull them to the surface, right? Wanting to pull their depths to the surface. But in the same way, that's kind of what's happening for you too, because you've got this particular like facade or presentation. I'm not in saying that it's not authentic, but it's definitely has a particular energy about it, okay? And this is something other than that. This is really kind of breaking you out of that. It's got you being like really bold and really courageous and really fiery and maybe more emotional. See what I mean? Because this seems like this is more reserved or refined, right? Which is interesting because we were talking about distill here. Refinement and distilling. And this card is really beautiful. It's got so much coming out of it. That's the first time I've seen it, but it's got all this, it's got purpose interwoven into it. It's got sacred space woven into it. It's got sacred purpose woven into it, right? So that's, and this is the overall energy. The overall energy here is talking about the fact that you want to break through to this one or get them to show their most authentic self because there's this knowing on your part that, that it's all tied in with sacredness. I hope that makes sense. So maybe because of that, it's, it's sparking this rebellious spirit within you, right? It's like, because it's too important. This opportunity, this interaction, this relationship is too important for you to just let it slip by kind of like, on the surface, right? It's like, it's too important. So it's got you doing things that are very unconventional for you, I wanna say. And interestingly, we're ending with the high priestess here at the end of the reading. And it feels, I mean, it's kind of tied in with this rebellion card, this rebellious heart. It feels like there's something about this interaction that is really sharpening your intuitive side, right? It's like, maybe you are approaching things or have been approaching things in a really intellectual, way kind of all up in your head you know an intuition is a different a different accessing of consciousness or mind right it's like it's maybe it's combining this fire with this with this high priestess energy but it feels like it's like as much as you maybe kind of are wanting to shake this one to get through to them because they are somehow resistant though not completely right because some of the resistance may just be almost like a side effect of this intermingling i hope that makes sense um so as much as you might want to shake them to get to the depths that you perceive within them like i said which is actually sharpening your perception it's like the reverse is actually true as well, that they're actually kind of pulling you out of your shell too, right? Because it's pulling this rebellious nature out. It's pulling, it's almost like it's getting you to speak your mind more spontaneously or more unfiltered, something like that, right? And I kind of feel like you may be saying, but I'm already very unfiltered. I'm already very authentic. I'm already very bold. But I feel like there's something about maybe the way that the two of you are meeting or the context in which you are interacting with each other that isn't maybe allowing as much of your true expression as you would like. That could be part of the frustration here, perhaps. There's something about the two of you that initially seems to have like kind of a limitation on it, right? It's like, it could be like being cordial, being professional. And you, it's it's bringing out this boldness within you where you're saying, okay, I know that, that maybe this is unprofessional, but I really feel deeply like I need to communicate. Like we need to bring this out. We need to talk about this, okay? All right. I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to continue to pull cards and create an extended. If you're interested in that, link is in the description. And if not, I will see you next time, Aquarius. Thanks. Bye.